In this video, we're going to develop the reset button that's labeled start a new function. And we're also going to take a look at how do we create the finishing styles and whatnot before we publish this to a web page. So going to our production file, the first thing I can see is that I need to go back to our checkbox dropdown and select button. Now, lining up with the grid and doing the same thing, the caption that we're going to type is whatever you want the button to say. So in this case, we can say, try a new function. Now here, there's no guide to actually say what objects you want to link to, because when you click a button, you can have multiple things happen. So it's not like a checkbox where just selecting and deselecting changes the visibility. Using what we want to have happen here, the first thing I know is that when I say start a new problem, I want the actual coordinate point to be hidden, and the actual coordinate point is linked to the boolean b. So I can say the first thing that should happen is b should turn to the value false. Likewise, a, which is showing the shape of the function, should also be set to false. So what that's going to do is it's going to cause these two checkboxes to immediately deselect. The next thing that I know that I should also do is change the x value to be a neutral number so that it's not always being the same x value used from problem to problem. The x value text box right here is linked to the number x val. So giving the command that x val should change to zero will automatically change this text box right here to be the number zero whenever the button is clicked. And then the last thing that I want to do is remember to take a look at possibly changing the guess as well, because the student's not always going to guess the same number. So we'll say that the guess, in this case, the number that's the guess val, should be changed to zero as well. And when I click OK, you'll notice that it creates a button, try a new function. And again, one of the things that I almost made the mistake of is clicking on it while my button tool is selected to show what will happen if I do that. It tries to make another button. So I'm just going to click cancel and come over here to my arrow tool. Now when I click this button, let's make sure that we have everything shown. Oh, it hit everything because we actually clicked it when we said create the new button. So let's try an x value of 5 and, well, 2 so that we can actually see the actual coordinate. And we'll say a guess of 4. And now if I click try a new function, it hides the function, it puts guess at 0, it puts our x value at 0, and notice our actual, which is hidden, I can tell that it's hidden because it has a white dot right here, is at 0, 0 as well. The last thing that I'm taking a look at here, I'm kind of getting dizzy looking at the outline of the text box and how sharp the grid is. So I'm going to go ahead and come over here to the graphics view and change the grid. And I'm going to select it to be a little bit of a finer dot. And that seems to kind of fix the problem. The other thing I'm going to do is make it a slightly lighter gray just to see what would happen. And I can see now that that doesn't really interfere with the text boxes that I see and it's a little bit easier on my eyes. And when I close this, sure enough, everything resizes properly. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to double check and see these right here, they move when we click them. So I'm going to go back through and make sure that all of my input boxes have their fixed object selected. And now if I go back to my move tool and right click on this, it moves still. So why is it doing that? Let's take a look here. If I go to Object Properties, it's a fixed object. This is a fixed object, and that's a fixed object. So apparently, you are still able to move them if you right-click on them, even if they are a fixed object. But they still stay put if they're a graphics view. I'm not worried about fixing that right at this moment. It still has all the main functionality, and I think that it's still user-friendly. I'm going to go and take a look and see if there's another video that I can put together describing what the difference there is. But for right now, we'll go ahead and keep this as is. And our next video, we'll actually see how do we publish this to a web page.